Hey guys, welcome back to camp. Um, came up, still chipping away at that ceiling. I figured maybe one more day up here I'll have it done. Um, but somebody sent me messages, message, asked me questions about my solar. Um, I tried to answer them best I could, but they seem to still have some questions. So I decided to make a video on it. Um, I'm going to start inside and work my way out, seeing how I'm in here. Um, and I'll try to be as descriptive as I can. If you have any questions, feel free to, you know, shoot me a message, comment. Um, and I'll try to answer best I can. But there again, I'm not an expert. This is what worked for me, so this is what I did. But the first thing you got to do is get yourself an electrical meter. I have the uh, Tessman clamp meter TCM 300D. I'll go ahead and put descriptions down below. Not a description, but a uh, link to Amazon if you're interested in it. I do. I am not an Amazon affiliate. So um, last I checked, it was I think $45, $49 with 10 or 15% off. I don't really remember. Um, but this little guy does everything. Um, I, I can't even tell you everything it does because I don't use any of the features. The only ones I use is amp, voltage, the continuity. Um, but this one also does temperature. Um, and NCV can check resistors, capacitors. Um, another feature that's nice has inrush. Um, that's where basically when you turn on an electrical motor, it'll tell you what the... Uh, surge amps were or the inrush amps were um so if you have to fix that comes with temperature probe nice leads nice manual to explain everything um well worth the money but you will definitely need something like that if you're gonna start messing around with uh electricity even if it is you know direct current anyways the first thing we start off with inside is where everything comes to this is an RV type breaker box I set this up for 30 amps um, overkill <laughs> total overkill I thought maybe sometime in the future somebody would want to hook it up to I'll call it shore power but grid power um, so that's the AC side this is the DC side um, part of where that clamp meter comes in handy is if you notice let me get it where I need to be here like right now we have these lights on and according to this it's drawing two amps so what I used it for honestly or one of the things I used it for when I put these little fuses in so it's drawn two amps so I believe I probably put a three amp fuse in there um, which will obviously protect protect things um, so that's where we start then let's go take from there we'll go take a look at the uh, the brains of the operation so let's go do that well guys this is this is pretty much everything I got going on right now got an EP ever MPP charge controller got a little breakers uh, ones for the solar ones for the voltage or the power going into the batteries and ones for the power going out I also have a fuse on the battery itself um, we have a 3000 watt inverter, pure sign inverter. This I got to eventually hook up a uh, generator. Um, so when the power gets low, just start the generator and it'll automatically kick over. Um, I have it set up opposite the way it's supposed to be. Um, it's supposed to be when you lose shore power, it kicks on. But in my case, I'm using this kind of as my shore power. Um, I've got six GC2 
golf cart batteries, Duracell. Uh, everybody and their brother used to use them years ago, but of course now we're into lithium phosphate, lithium ion. I don't even know. Um, these work best for me because these are. This is not heated. Um, I have six of them. I have two wired in parallel to give me 12 volt. They're six volts, so 12 volts, 12 volts, 12 volts wired in series gives me. Uh, 200 amps, 200 amps, 200 amps, 600 amps at 12 volts. But that is not usable. That's what they're capable of. Um, and I hope I said that right. Um, series versus parallel. From there, it just comes out. And currently, I'm just using two 300 or two 100, three 100 watt solar panels um, initially I just wanted to keep the battery charged um, but they're doing such a good job you can see over there on, on the deck or on the porch I was using a uh, miter saw earlier um, you can I, I've run grinders with it I've anything I could possibly think of um, the only thing it, I, I couldn't use a power washer um, power washer <laughs> send it into fits real quick um, but that's one reason we went in 300 watt um, there again that's something I would change we'll go back and decide back inside and discuss that yeah so if I if I could change anything back then probably would have bought a 200 watt inverter instead of a 300 watt inverter that's overkill obviously I don't even have enough it's nice in that I can use power equipment up here but I just do not have enough battery capacity to, to even utilize that um, in the long term um, so probably would have went with a 2000 watt which would have gave me Still gave me that startup, 15 amps. Um, the other thing I'd probably do differently today is I would go with one of those all-in-ones where you get the MPP charge controller, the inverter, battery charger, plus um, there you can wire it how I have it, where if your batteries get low, it would automatically turn on a generator not that I have that sort of generator but you if you started a generator it would go ahead and charge your batteries and power your AC devices so I, I definitely would have went that route and they're expensive um, but by the time you've added up all the pieces you're actually further ahead I also don't have it hooked up um, but I also have a battery charger that I was going to hook up to the generator side so that when, if and when we started the generator, that would also charge the batteries. Um, like I say, that all in one more than makes up for it. So I hope that answered that person's questions on the solar. Um, do me a favor, press that subscribe button, notification bell. If you have any questions or comments, shoot them down below. And I'll see you next time here at camp, guys. Take care.